Can we use a lithium battery to power IP cameras and access point? You may ask, who will use the batteries to power these two devices? Imagine you are asked to provide the Wi-Fi access in a football game. And it's the temporary deployment after the game complete, you have to remove all the devices in the football field. For the signal, it's not that difficult. You can set up a 5G router and get the network from the 5G cellular network and use this wireless access point to provide the Wi-Fi coverage for the audience. But the power is a different case. Since this is the temporary deployment, there's no guarantees you have the AC outlet in each of these locations you plan to set up the access points. Then the battery could be the perfect solution. You can set several batteries, each one come with the access point of the cameras, then provide the power for these two devices. Then use the fiber optic cable to connect this device back to the control, or even use the point-to-point -point wireless bridges to connect this device back to the control. All right, now let's move to the demonstration board and see how we can use this battery to power these two devices. This linear battery output DC 25.6 volt, it is 125 ampere hours. With these two parameters, we can calculate the total power budget this battery can provide with the full charge and how long it can keep these two devices running before we need to swat or discharge the battery. We can use a battery with different voltage like the DC 12 volt. One thing you need to know is there's PCB board built into all the lithium batteries. It controls the charging and discharging process. You need to read the specification about the maximum current the battery can provide. If the device you have at the edge try to pull more current this battery can provide, it could cause the battery overheat or stop providing power to your cameras or access point. We cannot connect this battery to these two devices directly. Both devices accept, accept PoE, so we need other equipment. This is the outdoor PoE switch. We are going to use this PoE switch to connect these two devices. There's a PoE port. We can connect the camera and access point to this PoE port and provide power to these two devices. We can even connect more cameras, even IoT devices. These two are the SFP slot. We plan to use the fiber optic cable. The SFP slot are designed for the fiber optic cable. We we'll use a fiber optic cable to link this PoE switch back to the control room. This is the power input. This outdoor PoE switch accepts a DC 48 volt. I guess you already noticed the voltage output from the battery doesn't match the voltage input this PoE switch requires. We we'll use another device to convert the voltage. All right, now let me attach this outdoor PoE switch to the wall. The outdoor PoE switch is on the wall. The voltage doesn't match. The PoE switch requires the input voltage between the DC48 to DC57. And this linear battery output to DC25.6 volt. We need another device called a voltage booster. The voltage booster accepts the voltage input between DC5 volt to DC29 volt. And if it boosts up the voltage, and output the DC48 volt, which is the correct voltage for the standard PoE. This is the digital plate. It will show the current voltage output pattern through this booster. And we got a setting which allow us to adjust the voltage output. We can set the output to DC54. And here we got the input and output. We are supposed to connect the input port to this linear battery I connect the output port to this outdoor PoE switch. Now let me attach this booster to the wall. One last thing, we need to use the copper cables to connect all this device and provide the power for the camera and the access point. Before you use a copper cables to connect all these devices, I want to say it's important to pick the copper wires with the large wire gauge. The large wire gauges cable can reduce the power loss in light. 
if the edge device we have pulled the high power from this battery which means the current flow through this cable is high and you are using the slint cables it could cause the temperature height on the surface of the cable and even melt the outer jacket all right let's connect this battery to this systems here i have at the breaker we can turn cut off the power when we set up everything or we don't need the power for the device first let's connect this cable to this breaker i take the brown for the positive and the blue for the negative Okay, it's pretty tight. Now we need short patch coat to lend this breaker and to this voltage booster. I use the red stem for the positive and the black for the negative. It's always remember the positive and negative and don't mix up, otherwise you are going to brew these devices. Okay, now let's connect this breaker to the input of the voltage booster. Still we got the positive and the negative. Let's connect this outdoor POE switch to the voltage output of this voltage booster. This is the cable from the outdoor POE switch. Here it's a little bit messy. We use the black to stand for the positive and the white to stand for the negative. Now let's connect this cable to our lithium battery. Here the red is the positive. And the black is the negative. And just one last step. Turn turn on the switch. See the now we get in the power, there's reading the output voltage is about 48 volt. And we have battery and power in this outdoor PoE switch. Now I've seen the power from this outdoor PoE switch. All right, the battery PoE switch is ready. Let's connect to our edge device. Let's connect the further one. It's the access point. and connect to the camera you can see we are getting the power for this outdoor access point and the camera i can hear the click and the indicators on which means both device getting the power we have the power system ready just one more thing is the network we need to send the signal back to the control room right we have two options the first option is we can use the wireless bridges in this case we are going to use the fiber optic cable the fiber this is the pre-mixed single mode fiber optic cable i'm going to put this cable on the wall so it's more easy for me to demonstrate Right. 
and we will connect this cable to this outdoor period switch. Remember we mentioned there's two SRP slot, which is designed for the outdoor fiber optic cable, but it's empty. You cannot connect this cable to this SRP slot directly. We need to use one device called SRP transceiver. The SRP transceiver will convert the electrical signal to the optical signal. All right, let me install the SRP transceiver. And we take one fiber optical strand, just one, not two. Okay. This one is not used at this, mo at this moment. And that would be it. Then we got this another end of the fiber optic cable and connect to the control room. You may wonder why we can use just one fiber optic cable to transmit and receive the data. Since we are using the BIDY transceiver, it takes different wave lengths to connect and receive the data. We do have another SRP slot, right? If we do have, we want to connect another location, we can link this outdoor PoE switch to the second outdoor PoE switch by using the second SRP slot. All right, that's all for today's video. If you have any question, please leave, me, leave your comment section below. We will reply you as soon as possible.